Hi, welcome once again to Math as a Second Language, where today we're going to discuss mixed numbers. And what I'm hoping you'll see as we go through this, that all of the problems that we often have in mathematics come from the fact that we're dealing with numbers rather than quantities. In other words, we're going to be talking about common fractions, which we've already done, mixed numbers, percents, decimals. They're all different languages that can be converted into whole number expressions, provided we uh, supply the missing nouns. So with that in mind, let me stop by showing you that we've already dealt with mixed numbers in real life, but never really thought about it because the nouns were present. For example, we say such things as four hours and 37 minutes, five feet and seven inches. And do you see why this is called mixed numbers? The two numbers we see here are four and 37, but the four is modifying hours and the 37 is modifying minutes. Same here. The five is modifying feet and the seven is modifying inches. So what we really have are mixed units. The numbers look the same, but the units are mixed. Now, what happens is, as long as the nouns are present, we don't have any problem with that. It's when you decide that you can't have the nouns. So for example, when you're dealing with four hours and 37 minutes, you can either say, okay, let the implicit noun be hours, or you could say, let the implicit uh, noun unit be minutes. So if the unit is minutes, we, re we rewrite four hours and 37 minutes. Well, there's 60 minutes in an hour, so four hours would be four times 60 minutes, which is 240 minutes, plus 37 more minutes, that's 277 minutes. However, if the unit is hours, we write four hours and 37 minutes as four hours, plus 37 of what it takes 60 of to make an hour, and now, since the 4 and the 37 sixtieths are modifying the same noun, we can add the adjectives, 4 plus 37 sixtieths, and keep the common noun, which is ours. And then what we do when we deal with mixed numbers, and uh, it's, it can be somewhat confusing at the beginning, but we simply leave out the plus sign. When we write 4 hours, when we write 4 and 37 sixtieths hours, it's really... 4 plus 37 of what it takes 60 of to make another hour. And be very careful here how the adjective and noun theme comes in. The 4 and 37 sixtieths is modifying hours, and the 277 is modifying minutes. They both describe the same amount of time. But be careful, as adjectives, 4 and 37 sixtieths and 277 are not the same. 277 is much more than 4 plus a fractional part. But 4 and 37 sixtieths hours is the same as 277 minutes. It's like saying 12 is not equal to 1, but 12 inches equals 1 foot. In a similar way, when we talk about somebody being 5 feet 7 inches tall, we can say he's 5 feet plus seven of what it takes 12 of, or we can say he's 67 inches. But notice we can't use the equal sign here because the five and seven twelfths are mod and the 67 are modifying different nouns. So even though five and seven twelfths is not equal to 67, five and seven twelfths feet equals 67 inches. And you see, if, if I were allowing myself to use the nouns here and I didn't want to talk about a fractional part of a foot or a fractional part of an hour, I would just use my units to be minutes and inches. Now, what happens is when we get to bigger numbers, you remember when we introduced fractions, we talked about two divided by three, and we said things like, imagine that you had two cornbreads and you wanted to divide them among three people. What you could do is to divide each of the two cornbreads into three pieces and give each person one piece from each of the two cornbreads. Now, you could do the same thing if you had 200 people. You could, I'm sorry, if you had 200 cornbreads and three people. What you could say is I'll cut each of the 200 cornbreads into three pieces and I'll give each person one piece from each of the 200. 
that's kind of a tedious process. So what we would most likely do is we would say, okay, 200 cornbreads divided by three people is the same as 200 divided by three, 200 thirds cornbreads per person. And what we would do is divide the three into the 200, getting 66 with a remainder of two, and we would say the 200 pieces make up 66 cornbreads plus two-thirds of another cornbread, two of the three pieces that you would need. And so six, 200 divided by three is 66 plus two-thirds. And another way of saying that is then if you divide 200 cornbreads equally with three people, each person receives 66 and two-thirds cornbreads. Okay? Now there's a little bit of vocabulary that comes in with this. You see in 200 over three, the numerator is bigger than the denominator, so for some reason, they elected to call this an improper fraction. There's nothing improper about it. If anything, I would have called it top heavy. But the reason it's called improper is that you can break this down into a whole number plus a fractional part that's less than one. And by the way, don't we do this quite commonly? We say, you don't say, it took me three hours and 463 minutes to do something. You usually break it down into the biggest number of hours until you have enough, only enough minutes left. Uh, not, you have just enough minutes left, not, but not enough to make another hour. Okay? So we we'll frequently say four hours and 30 minutes rather than three hours and 90 minutes. So we do the same thing here. We say by using division, every proper improper fraction can be rewritten as a whole number plus a proper fraction, which means a fraction whose numerator is less than its denominator. So for example, if I see the improper fraction 67 over 9, that tells me to divide 67 by 9. If I do that, I get 7 with a remainder of 4. And since the denomination here is ninths, the remainder of 4 means 4 ninths. So in other words, 67 divided by 9, written as a mixed number, is 7 and 4 ninths. Be careful. What if I wrote 81 over 11 as a mixed number? I would now divide 81 by 11. 11 goes into 81 seven times of the remainder of 4. I get the same answer here as I get here. But these are not the same. The reason being that the remainder of 4 here is based on, a whole num on the entire unit being 9, and the 4 here is based on the entire unit uh, being 11. So if we wrote this as a mixed number, the first one is four and 7 and 4 ninths. The second one is 7 and 4 elevenths. And by the way, I often prefer to write a mixed number. Uh, I'm sorry. I often prefer to write a mixed number as an improper fraction. And the reason is if you take 7 and 4 ninths and write it sloppily, it looks like 74 ninths. So be very, very careful when you do write a mixed number that there's no danger of uh, making this kind of a mistake. How do we treat this in terms of whole numbers? This is what we introduced the cornbread model for. So for example, looking at 8 and 4 sevenths, in terms of cornbreads, the denominator 7 tells us to think of a cornbread as being divided into 7 pieces. In that case, 8 cornbreads would be 7 pieces 8 times, or 56 pieces. 4 sevenths of a cornbread, well, all we've done here is really disguise the fact that we're using a piece to describe one seventh of a cornbread. So four sevenths of a cornbread is four pieces. So eight and four sevenths cornbread is altogether what? 56 pieces plus four pieces or 60 pieces. In other words, eight and four sevenths is not the same as 60, but eight and four sevenths cornbreads is the same as what? 60 of what it takes seven of to make the cornbread. And that would be 60 over seven. And if you look through these steps, you'll notice that what we did in effect was we said, well, since each cornbread is divided into seven pieces, eight cornbreads would be 56 pieces, plus four more pieces is 60 pieces, and another name for a piece is 
one of water takes seven off to make the cornbread. If you wanted to be purely mathematical about this, you could take eight and four sevenths and write what it means. It's eight plus four sevenths. If you're more comfortable of thinking of fra fractions rather than whole numbers mixed in with fractions, remember you can always put a whole number over one without changing it. Because what does, what does this mean? It means what must you multiply one by to get eight? The answer is simply eight. So I now want to add eight over one plus four over seven. I can't add them unless they have a common denomination. So another name for eight over one is 56 over seven. 56 over seven plus four over seven is 60 over seven. So do you sort of get the idea of what's going on here? We're really just using different languages and because the nouns are not visible, we have to be very careful in how we invent certain terms to make sure that there's no ambiguity. As I say, my own feeling is when in doubt, try to think of a visualization where you would be doing that kind of a problem and to think of how uh, in that visualization you could think of all the numbers as being whole numbers. Here, here's an application. I want to measure two and two-thirds cups of flour, but all I have is a one-third cup measuring cup. So the question is, how many times must I fill up the one-third cup to get two and two-thirds cups? So watch how this becomes a whole number problem. Since I'm dealing with thirds, it takes three-thirds to make one cup, two-thirds, two of three-thirds twice to make six-thirds. See, three-thirds is one cup. Six-thirds is two cups. Nine-thirds would be three cups. And so right away, I know I'm going to have to fill up the one-third of a cup measuring cup more than six times, but less than nine times. And to get the answer exactly, what I can say is two-thirds means two of what it takes three of to make a cup. So another way of saying two-thirds of a cup is to say two-thirds. So now if I add over here, if the language is cups, the answer is two and two-thirds cups. But if the noun is thirds, the answer is eight-thirds. So in other words, uh, what I have to do is fill up the one-third of a measuring cup eight times to get two and two-thirds of a cup. Eight-thirds of a cup is two and two-thirds cups. Okay, and if you actually did the long division, I mean short division, eight divided by three, what would you get? Two with the remainder of two. Two cups and two thirds is what eight thirds of a cup would be. And I think that about brings us to a good place to end today's lesson. You see, what we're gonna do in subsequent lessons is to talk about the arithmetic uh, of mixed numbers. How do you add mixed numbers? How do you subtract them? How do you multiply them? How do you divide them? But for today's lesson, I just wanted to make sure that the concept of a mixed number and its relationship to an improper fraction was f fixed firmly in your mind. So let's close today with our usual practice problem. This is where you pause the video and try to do the problem. And after you've worked on the problem, whether you've solved it or just put enough time in so that you think it's time to see how I solved it, resume watching and then you'll see my solution. But the problem is a recipe calls for four cups of flour and all you have is a two-thirds of a cup measuring cup. How many times must you fill the two-thirds of a cup measuring cup in order to obtain the four cups of flour? The trick I would use to make this seem more like a whole number problem is since we're dealing with a two-thirds of a cup measuring cup, it would be nice to work in thirds. So what would four cups be? Each cup is three-thirds, so four cups would be three-thirds th three four times. So another name for four cups is 12 thirds of a cup. You're using a two-thirds of a cup measuring cup this looks like a multiplication problem, but it's really unmultiplying. How many times must you add two-thirds to get six-thirds, six 12 thirds? See, isn't, 
To get from 2 to 6, 12, you have to multiply by 6, and the nouns are already here. So in other words, the answer to the problem is you'd have to fill it six times. And again, if we just wanted to do this problem mechanically, you say, well, how many times does a two-third cup measuring cup go into four cups? And you say, I'll just take four and divide it by two-thirds. Then I'll invert and multiply. And I get the same answer. Now, doing it this way is probably much quicker than thinking of it this way, but what I'm trying to have you see is that by doing it this way first, this way becomes more natural. In other words, when I do a problem like this, this is the way I do it. I don't say, let me see now, a cup is uh, three-thirds and I have four cups. No, I just say it's four cups divided by two-thirds of a cup, and I just do the problem. But what I want you to see is how once you have quantities in the problem, you can paraphrase much more readily than you can when all you see are the abstract numbers. At any rate, I think that's enough for today, so I'm going to look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, have fun and work hard.